Hi, my name is Mariah Raybritt. I'm here to show you how to use Google Slides um, to make a digital animation of your artwork. Um, you could also do this in PowerPoint and key, Keynote. I'm gonna show you how to get to Google Slides. So um, I'll just go to Google Slides as a search and you can find it here. Um, scroll down and see it here. Um, if you're signed in to your Gmail account, you can go up to these um, this option up here and just scroll down and it's hit slides here. So this is just like PowerPoint or Keynote. Um, it's just free also. Um, it also has to have uh, for you to export um, your slide presentation to video, just like you do for um, in Keynote or PowerPoint, you need to have a plugin for your Google Slides, which is also free. So I will show you um, that if you go to add-ons here, click that, you can see that I have Creator Studio um, as my add-on. But when you first you do this, you won't have this here yet. You can go to add-ons and then hit, click on get add-ons. And these are all the add-ons um, that you could install and will help you uh, do things, fun things with your files. Um, so I would search uh, Creator Studio and click on that and here it is. So, and then this button would be normally install. You would hit that and it would install. But the thing is, is that it wants um, permission to um, access your files, which is what any add-on would want for your files to your Google Drive. So that's something that you need to agree to. You can also just, um, I may, eventually, I hope that Google will work around this and, and you'll be able to export your files um, into video form in the same way that PowerPoint does this and um, Keynote does this as well. So um, just showing you Google Slides because it seems to be the most accessible way to um, work with your artwork and um, as a free based platform, it's great. And you could share it pretty easily too. So once you've done that, um, you can create your new presentation. And what I've done here is typically when you start a new presentation, this is what comes up. And it's uh, what comes up when you open PowerPoint and Keynote, some um, both same versions. So what I do usually is just click on these two text boxes and delete them. And I'm also going to go to file and um, let's see, page setup. So this is um, a default widescreen is usually what um, presentations are made in because when you're projecting them onto the screen, that's usually the size that they're going on to. But I'm gonna go down to custom. Now for Patrick Arts Council, um, they're going to have a uh, submission through for Mocha Lights this fall. And I do know that for um, the um, Art on the Marquee uh, that's going to be displayed um, on the Patrag Theater, um, they need to have it, um, I think it's 180 pixels width with 90 pixels uh, height. So I'm just gonna go down to pixels and I'm going to say 1080 width and 90 height. Hit apply. And here's my marquee um, presentation all create all ready for me. I'm going to X out of themes um, and just have the nice big board ready for my artwork. <clears throat> now I'm going to go up to insert, click on that, and I'm going to go to image. And I'm gonna upload from my computer. That's where all my artwork is. And I just kind of threw some things up here, but um, this is my 
just like a watercolor um, kind of sketch that I've made and I've made patterns out of this kind of wave and sea print. What it does what in, in, in um, PowerPoint and Keynote um, and Google Slides is that when you insert your artwork, it will automatically size it, size your work to the presentation. It won't be the largest that it actually is. It will actually put it onto the board and size it accordingly that way. So what you can do is if I hold down the shift key and go to one of the corners and drag my mouse down, it will enlarge my image. And I could also turn this around, rotate this. If I hold down my shift key, it will go to um, even numbered angles, which you may want or not. Um, and I'm just enlarging my work. I wanna make these waves kind of um, animated and moved. If I double click on this, it will give me my crop marks. In PowerPoint and um, believe in Keynote, you have to, um, there's a button, I'll show you. It's a PowerPoint. So there's a button that my artwork selected. There's a crop button. If I hit this, I could move my artwork up and down and size it, crop it to my dimensions, whatever I do. Um, in Google Slides, it's a double click. <clears throat> or there's a the crop mark icon up here. So um, I'm going to uh, use my crop tool to size it to the, um, the presentation file, the presentation size. If I hit enter, that's my crop. It, um, it will save my artwork there. It doesn't mean that the artwork is actually cropped. It just means the viewing um, area is so I'm just gonna make this a little uh, larger to get my little octopus out of there and make this larger here. I'm just expanding it and there. Great. Bring this in a little bit. Or maybe I'll just bring um, crop marks in a bit. Okay. Hit return. Enter. There we go. So now I have one side of the wave done. And if I select this and go to edit, copy, or hit command C, and then paste for command B for paste as my shortcut. I'm just gonna bring this over here to um, keep to the, um, the size of the marquee. I double click again. And now I can actually move this a little bit um, and adjust my waves. And make it a little different. I wonder if also if I select this and hit arrange and order to the back, maybe that will overlap somehow. Okay. I'm gonna move this over slightly. What's extremely helpful when you're making these animations is that you have um, some sort of idea of like what you want to animate. And um, it's helpful to storyboard before you um, come into the computer and bring, bring your um, artwork to life. It's great to like take a sketchbook or a paste paper and just do some boxes and do um, a sequential movement of your images, like a general idea. So this way, when you come in here um, into these programs, you can just follow your map and um, add in your images as you see them. Um, okay, so my, um, my waves are here, they're fine, they're great. 
in order for um, an animation to occur, I'm just going to ignore like this, the slide animations that you can normally do and just come over here and hit insert. Um, let's say, insert and then, um, oh, I'm sorry, slide and duplicate slide. So now I have slide two here on the side. And what I'm gonna do here is just um, maybe just move my um, waves down. I'm holding onto the shift key. So it just kind of, it helps, helps the image move directly down in a vertical sense. And then um, maybe I just move it over a little bit and have this from edge to edge. And then this one, this little edge here comes, maybe we'll move this up a bit and over. I'm not holding my shift key because it's a little freewheeling over here and um, we need to position that. So from slide one to slide two, there's my uh, movement. Okay, I'm also going to um, maybe duplicate this. And say maybe this now goes to another wave. On the side comes to this wave here. There we go. So one, two, three. I'm using one file um, of the same image, but you can also um, use them as many as you would like and just kind of layer them and all that. It's important to um, note that. Um, JPEGs that you have, they are solid background. So um, you could have like a, like whatever background already created um, and putting them in. But if you layer JPEGs upon JPEGs, the backgrounds will show. So you could kind of see the, um, the edges of where the JPEG ends. Um, PNGs, pings are really great because you can have transparent backgrounds and you could just have your image um, showing. And okay, I could show you one of those. It's um, let's see, big fish, big fish. Let's say maybe she's going to be a little bit more uh, vis visual, but you could see like she, she her background is transparent, so I could actually move her around. And um, I'm just copying Command C and Command V and pasting her um over here yeah. and then if i select her by hit holding down the shift key and and clicking on each of them command c copies and then i could bring them over to slide two command v paste but i want them to move too right so i want her to come down her to come up her to come down her to come up from this way i'll go this way so and I'm going to select all of them. <clears throat> Hit Command C. And like Command V, it places them in the same exact place as the previous slide. And I'm just going to move them a little bit further along. Okay. Now I have like some movement, and my little fish are moving as I go through. Um, So let's say so um so now I've created a little fish um animation here and I'm going to go to um my um add-ons click on add-ons and go to creator studio. So I think I could just say um, create GIF or create video or whatever. So it brings me to this Creator Studio 2.6.0 is the latest version. Um, <clears throat> you could watch a video tutorial to get started, but I already kind of know I've tried this out, how to, how to export my um, work into videos. So my output width, as we said, was um, in pixels, it's 1080. 
And then interval in seconds. So this is the, the time between the transition, transitions of the slides. So two seconds is a little long. I'm going to say um, maybe 0.5 seconds long seems fine with me. And you can choose to make an animated GIF, um, an image sequence where they will export, where Creative Studio will export your work into uh, separate images, like um, I think it's pings, PNGs, um, or video files, video with audio, which I haven't tried. I don't, I don't have the premium version anyway. So I'm going to try it for animated GIF. So I'm going to hit go and Creator Studio will render my slides as a GIF. So I could automatically download it. I'll just hit download file to my computer. Here it is, a title presentation.gif. And I could also preview it with the eyeball. I'll just put it preview in a new window and I'll hit that. And now you see my slides are uh, transitioning in the speed that I'd like at 0.5 seconds each. And my little fishies are swimming by and the animation is created with some drawings that um, I've, I've made. I think there's another way to do um, video file. So I'm just gonna hit that just to try that as well. I'm gonna hit go. Render completed. I'm just gonna preview that as well. Now it's been up, oh, processing video. Please check the layer. Let's just download it then. <clears throat> and then we can just check the download. And this is some quick time player. And I'm just gonna hit play. And it's just gonna roll through once and it's only one second long. So what I can do here is uh, I'm just gonna X out of this and go to my QuickTime player. If you needed to quickly just loop this and make this a little bit longer, like the GIF, which um, always loops, um, MP4 uh, videos don't, um, don't automatically, don't loop basically. So you have to make them, if you want them to look like they loop, you just have to copy and paste your clips. So I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to go down to add clip to end. So it says, what, what clip do I want to add? And it's my downloaded um, untitled presentation, which I should have saved as a title, choose media. And because it's so uh, horizontal, it's a little difficult to see but if you can see here, um, let me see if I can, I can imagine, yeah. um, this little yellow uh, highlighted clip is, is the added clip to the end. I can add this a few times because it's selected. I could go to edit and copy and then go to edit, paste, and it will paste it again. And if I just uh, use the shortcut command V, I could paste this a few times over and it will add the clip to the end. And you could add this with new clips as well. Um, you can make a few different presentations and export them as videos and um, add the clips in to make a one long, long, long video. So um, let's see how long this is. This I'll hit done. Now it's 19 seconds long, which is great. So let's hit play and just see how that goes. And now it just looks like it's looped. It's only three slides long, um, but it gives this effect of uh, the animation moving along. 